Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. This is the second half of a two-part series about the history behind the wonders in Age of Empires 2. Last time I covered the original Age of Kings and Conquerors, so this time it'll be the 13 HD expansion civilizations. I'll be giving you my best guess of which real life building each wonder is based on, and I'll have some links in the description in case you want to read a bit more about any of them. So with that, let's check them out. start things off with the Berbers, and their wonder is the Hassan Tower in Morocco. Believe it or not, despite looking like a perfectly reasonable building, it's actually only half finished. It was started in 1195, intended to be the largest minaret in the world, and was meant to have the largest mosque in the world beside it as well. Unfortunately, when the caliph who ordered its construction died, it was only 140 feet tall out of an intended 260, and apparently they just figured it was good enough. Work on the mosque itself had barely been started, and it had just a few walls and 200 columns put down so far. An interesting nod to their history is that their wonder finishes when the construction bar is only at 50%. I'm just kidding, but that would have been a really cool detail to include. For the Burmese, their wonder is the Shwezagon Pagoda. It's a Buddhist temple in modern-day Myanmar, completed in 1102. Now some people believe it houses a tooth and or bone of Buddha, though the tooth, if it's there, may also be a replica sent from Sri Lanka. Historical records say that the site was chosen by a white elephant carrying Buddha's tooth in a casket, and that after a journey of some length, the elephant knelt down near the river at Shwezagon. It was decided that that would be the location of the pagoda and resting place for the relic. I'm personally a bit skeptical about the story, since when I destroy the wonder, I never find a relic. And I've tried this hundreds of times, still nothing. I don't think it's there. One of the more identifiable features of the pagoda is the almost golden colored roof, but that was actually added in the 1980s and is made up of around 30,000 copper plates. That wasn't originally part of the building, but is now such a recognized feature that it's understandable why they went with a similar color tone in the game. Moving on, the Ethiopian's wonder is Bet Emmanuel in Lalibela, Ethiopia. Unlike its Age of Empires representation, in reality the building wasn't so much constructed as it was cut out of the rock top down, using chisels, axes, and other blades, presumably after researching both stone mining techs. It's one of several of what are called rock-hewn Orthodox churches in Ethiopia, which were made in a similar method of first outlining the general shape onto mostly flat volcanic rock and digging straight down to create a monolith, followed by essentially sculpting the rock into a building. It's interesting that despite being the equivalent of a large sculpture, they still tried to imitate conventional building features of the time, which included layering long wooden beams with mortar and stone. That's why you see the prominent horizontal bars, despite the fact that this was not constructed in the usual sense, and there was no practical use for them. The Ethiopians also got special attention by having another secret wonder that was unused. You can find it as a palace in this scenario editor, and it was based off a similar building in the area called Bet Georgis. Next up, the Inca's wonder looks to me like it's probably taking some artistic liberties and doesn't look exactly like anything I could find. The green steps do bear some resemblance to the terraces that have become so closely tied with Incan cities, and I think that's an intentional look. The round and square towers at the top also bear some resemblance to the Temple of the Sun at Machu Picchu. I think though it's a bit of an amalgamation of styles and designed to fit in with the other American wonders. One cool thing about Inca masonry is how irregularly shaped the blocks were sometimes pounded into, which allowed them to interlock to the extent of even appearing like puzzle pieces. There's even a famous 12-sided stone placed without mortar, where the stones still fit so well together it's said even now, 700 years later, you can't even put a coin between them. This is all the more impressive considering the stones were shaped not only with bronze and copper tools, but put in place without the invention of the wheel. Intentional or not, interlocking stones also gave the added advantage of earthquake resistance, and even in a large earthquake with a lot of shaking, the unmortared stones could move freely, but would spontaneously reform into their normal resting position afterward. Pretty clever for a civilization living in an area with so many earthquakes. 
Moving on to the Indians, they've actually had two wonders. Originally, their wonder was Golgambas, which is a mausoleum containing a tomb for a sultan in the 17th century and his family. It's hard to say why that was chosen over Taj Mahal, which was actually completed three years earlier and is a more iconic building for Westerners, in my opinion. Both are pushing it in terms of the time period for Age of Empires, though. Quite possibly for that reason, the Indians were later given a new wonder. This time, it's a cross between the Brihadishvara and the Virupaksha temples, with what I think are some very identifiable features from each. They're both good examples of Dravidian architecture, which is characterized by the distinctly tall and ornate gatehouses called Gopuram, which lead into Hindu temples. In comparison to the first wonder, which was from the 1600s, this one is much more in line with southern Indian architecture during the Middle Ages. Indians even have a third wonder of sorts with the Sanchi Stupa, available in the scenario editor. Sanchi is a Buddhist temple in central India and an incredibly old building, thought to be from the 3rd century BC. Next, the Italian wonder is Genoa Cathedral, also commonly referred to as the Cathedral of St. Lawrence. Its construction started around 1100, but was expanded in stages over the next roughly 400 years to get to its current state. Beyond its use for religious purposes, the cathedral's courtyard also served as the only public space in Genoa during the Middle Ages, which made it important for both political and civil life. If you ever wanted to find idle villagers, that's where you'd look. The cathedral is actually quite lucky to be in as good shape as it is, and has had two close calls in its history. The first was a fire in 1296 as a consequence of fighting between the Guelphs, who supported the Pope, and the Ghibellines, who supported the Holy Roman Emperor. The damage luckily was relatively minor, and the building was repaired shortly afterward. The second close call was during World War II, where the British Navy and Air Force bombarded Genoa, and due to an error from inverted controls, fired an armor-piercing shell that accidentally hit the cathedral. Luckily, as it was intended for heavily armored targets, it failed to detonate due to the softness of the cathedral walls. It's still there in the cathedral on display. I'm no bomb expert, but hopefully they found a way to neutralize it or something. Now, for the Khmer, their wonder is Angkor Wat. You can recognize the large central tower and four smaller ones around it, though it's obviously had to be compressed to make it fit the general Age of Empires wonder shape. The design was intended to represent Mount Meru, the center of the universe in Hindu, Jain, and Buddhist cosmology, with five towers to represent the five peaks of the mountain, while the giant moat around it represents the ocean. The moat is actually a big part of the reason why it's in such good shape today, and prevented the jungle from encroaching over the centuries. Located in Cambodia and built in the early 12th century, it's considered the largest religious monument in the world. It was originally constructed as a Hindu temple in the Khmer Empire's capital city of Angkor, but over the next hundred years was converted into a Buddhist temple and has been in near continuous use as such ever since. The temple complex is a source of great national pride in Cambodia and is even represented on their flag. Building it also reduces the culture and gold cost of acquiring new tiles by 25%. Oh wait, wrong game. Next up for the Magyars, their wonder is Corvin Castle in Romania, though Brand Castle also shares some pretty similar Renaissance Gothic features. Tourists who visit are told that Vlad the Impaler, sometimes referred to as Dracula, was imprisoned there for seven years, though this is sometimes disputed by historians. Construction started in 1446, but like so many other wonders, it was expanded over several hundred years, and some creative liberties were taken during recent renovations, ironically enough to make it look more like what the architects thought a gothic castle should look like. The extreme pointed roofs of the towers, for instance, are a recent addition. There are also several legends concerning the castle, including one that the castle's well was dug by three Turkish prisoners, by hand, without any tools over the course of 15 years. The castles also appeared on various TV shows such as Ghost Adventurers and Most Haunted Live, supposedly haunted by the ghosts of prisoners who died there. We'll leave them to rest for the moment though and head on to the Malay Wonder, which was probably the hardest to track down, but it's Kandi Kalasan. It's an 8th century Buddhist temple in Java, Indonesia. It's in fact the oldest such temple in the region, though not the largest. The temple is still around today, but would have originally had many more statues both inside and out, with several rooms containing large bronze statues, which unfortunately have all been looted at some point, probably for scrap metal. It's an interesting choice to me as the wonder, as there are other much larger and more impressive structures from the same time period, 
even in the same area. It's entirely possible it just came down to an aesthetic choice. For the Malians now, their wonder is the Great Mosque of Janae. The current structure is fairly recent, but the first mosque built at the site was made in the 13th century. Being primarily made from mud bricks and adobe, the building needed to be diligently maintained in order to prevent cracks and erosion from breaking it down, which is exactly what happened. In 1906 though, it was decided that the mosque would be rebuilt, and as always there's disagreement about how faithfully it was recreated, and in this case to what extent French administrators tried to guide the process towards what they thought a West African mosque should look like. However authentic its appearance might be compared to the original design, it's indisputably one of the most famous landmarks in Africa and the largest mud brick building in the world, considered a shining example of Sudano-Sahelian architecture. Other good examples of that style might also be familiar to Age of Empires players. In case you're wondering what's up with all the spikes, those are actually bundles of sticks, which besides maybe being included for aesthetic reasons, are mainly present to help as scaffolding for the annual repairs to the plaster that protects the mud bricks underneath. That maintenance is actually done by locals in an annual festival not so creatively named the plastering of the Great Mosque, which involves most of the community for a few day period. Like the Ethiopians, they also have an unused wonder that you can find in the editor under the palace label. There's no famous building that exactly matches it, but it kind of looks like a more elaborate version of Sankor Madraza. Whatever the inspiration, it wasn't used, and is just one more thing for scenario editors to play with. Next up, the Portuguese wonder is Belém Tower in Lisbon. It was constructed in the early 1500s for the purpose of defending the city from water attack via the Tagus River. How does a tower protect a river, you ask? Well, you give it 17 cannons. Unfortunately, the Age of Empires version seems to be lacking this handy feature, so don't use it to defend rivers. That might be surprisingly historically accurate though, as the tower didn't do a whole lot. The first time it was tested in battle against the Spanish in 1580, it was surrendered after a few hours fight. It was also used in defending Lisbon from a fleet of French ships in 1831, where most of the French fleet just sailed past it. The French managed to capture the still anchored Portuguese fleet, who never fired a shot, and forced the Portuguese government to sign a treaty, and also took some of the ships. Now besides its role as a questionably effective coastal fortress, it's also been used as a customs house and a prison. That's pretty convenient. If you don't pay your taxes on imported goods, the prison is just down the hall. In addition to that, the tower is also considered culturally significant. It's notable as a good example of Manuelan architecture, which combines the Portuguese Gothic style and maritime features, such as robes, along with some more exotic features which were becoming fashionable as a result of Portugal's vast exploration during the period. The location of our next wonder though is not somewhere the Portuguese explored. This time it's the Slavic wonder Kiji Pogost. It's a relative latecomer, arguably outside the Age of Empires II time period, being built in the 17th to 18th centuries. One of the most interesting aspects of the building is that it was created entirely from interlocking logs with no nails in its original construction. Local legend says it was built by one man with a single axe, who afterward threw it into the lake, saying there was not and will not be another one to match it. Great plan, idiot. Arm the fish people with the greatest axe of mankind? Does anybody actually think it's a coincidence that Aquaman is suddenly so good at throwing axes? Think about it. Getting back to the wonder though, in reality there is also a bell tower and nearby small but heated church for the winter and those weren't included, but overall the Church of Transfiguration is captured with impressive attention to detail. To finish up the list we have the Vietnamese wonder, Nan Thap Temple. Maybe. If it is that particular temple, it would make sense, given its 17th century construction and status as being among the more famous pagodas in Vietnam. The temple is actually 10 different buildings, with the largest and most iconic one being used for the in-game wonder. It's considered a good example of the architectural style during the Lei Dynasty. It contains several famous statues, the most prized of which is a statue of the thousand-handed and thousand-eyed Guan Yin widely considered to be one of the most remarkable statues from the period. Now before I finish, I do want to acknowledge that I don't have a history background and the Age of Empires wiki was very helpful in helping track down a few of these. 
I highly recommend it as a starting place for further reading if you're interested, or you can check out some of the other sites that I used in the description. My hope is this video gives you a renewed appreciation for the attention to detail and the amount of effort that's clearly gone into making Age of Empires such a historically rooted game. The Koreans and Incas fighting in Arabia is another matter altogether, but you know what I mean. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.